All right, all right, all right. I know that was a long, long pause if you were here in the beginning, but you have tuned into Put a Pin in It Conversations with Alisa, and I am Alisa. <laughs> I am so glad that you decided to join me today because guess what? I got the hookup. I got the scoop. I got the hook. I need you to like and share. I need you to like and share all across Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube because tonight, Somebody say tonight. Somebody put in the chat. Somebody say tonight. I'm not moving forward till I see it. Somebody say tonight. Type it. Tonight. I don't see it tonight. Somebody type tonight. Are y'all here or what y'all doing? <laughs> Thank you, Jermaine, my number one, my main man. Tonight, we are going to be watching Preacher's Reunion together, and we are going to react together. <laughs> Honey, you know where there's a will, there's a way. I'm going to find out how to do it, and I found out how to do it, and we are going to watch it together, and y'all know I was so invested in that show, but before we get into that, I'm going to bring on my co-host, Queen. What's up, Queen? Hey, hey, everybody. I'm chilling. I'm feeling good. Yes. Hey, feeling good on? in the hood. What's up? Yeah. And All right, we baby. got to talk about the women's national association basketball association we have to talk about that so before we first go first of all kudos kudos to you because you was on point you was right you was right you was hey right. i already everybody come on everybody knew south carolina was gonna win did we not if you didn't know did you did you not think that was gonna win i i didn't no i didn't for real, what? I thought that no, and I'm gonna tell you why. Okay. Tell skill, me why. I thought that they were going to commercialize things to the fullest. Mm -hmm. Have the rep they tried, have the refs doing reps doing everything they could for Caitlin Clark. Right. To show out for Caitlin Clark. But Got you. Caitlin, the real Caitlin Clark that we have seen pr previously didn't show up, but we, we'll get to that. So no, on, for that reason, I didn't think that they would. Okay. I get you on that because I was there in person. <laughs> I have some good things. Let me tell y'all some. It was phenomenal to behold with my own eyes. Richard Harrison said he knew I said by 15. Okay. So these coaches we got don staley and we got lisa i think what's her name Bert blurter or something like that i don't know i call her the cat lady all right so we because <laughs> she looked like she owned like a thousand cats but don <laughs> don is amazing y'all her accolades man i i let me tell you something Don Staley is like she's she's going down the road to being the most decorated coach in college history. She just got she what when did she get to um South Carolina? She got to South Carolina in 2008, right? Her past 3 seasons, her team has went 109 and only lost three games that is mm. ridiculous last year she lost all five of her starters and let me tell you who's on on her roster she got pow pow is a senior but pow pow is staying her fifth year ashley mm. ashlyn watkins that girl that can dunk 
She's a sophomore. Tessa Johnson, who went off, she's a freshman. <laughs> Cardosa is going to the WNBA. Ooh, Wiley is a freshman. They have a center that we haven't even seen yet because she, she hurt her knee. Adele Tack, 6'5". She's a freshman. Fagan mm. is a junior. Chloe Kitts is a sophomore. Bree Hall is a junior. Sanaya Jai, she gone. They, they kicked off the scene. Um, Raven Johnson is a sophomore. And Sakima Walker, she's leaving. She's a senior. Let me tell you something. They're gonna be All, monsters next year. They're gonna be crazy. They they are looking to. I see them winning back to back for at least three years, for at least because Caitlin Clark is gone. Uh, Angel Reese is gone. <laughs> All of these people are, I think Paige is, like, all these people are gone that would really like give them some type of whatever. They are really setting themselves up for success. No, and like Richard Harrison saying, nobody is transferring. Nobody. So what do you think about mm. that? What do you think? Me? Yeah, what do you think? Do you think oh, they're going to be a I think I just said I think they're gonna be monsters next <laughs> next year. Like, oh my gosh, I really do. Um, first of all, this has set the tone and it has built so much more belief within themselves. Like she she talked, she was with Robin from um on the Today Show or Good Morning Good Morning America. And she said, you know, they was they was not like that in the beginning. They mm -hmm. were just not wanting to listen, not not wanting to, you know, follow instructions, show up on time and things like that. Just basically being who they are young people and so right. when she came to them you know she had to come to their level because they wasn't going to get where she had her mindset you know right. and so for them to experience that transition and see the outcome when you follow the set plan right there there's nothing that they won't be able to uh, achieve at this point right so she not I only built players she built players right and she is the co every, all, every player on that team esteems her high they're like they they seem like they'll run through brick wall big brick wall for dawn Staley. like <laughs> they are like this is my coach she coaches me like pow 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 and um pow pow is a family person and cordosa didn't have any family so every time she talk about coach, she always cried because she's like, she's my family away from my family. You know, that's what it's all about. That's it what is. that's what it's all about. And every it one is. of those names I named that is on their roster can play some basketball. Mm -hmm. I was so that, proud to see that young lady step up. I was so proud. And she dug back into her toolkit and remembered from high school what got her where she where mm -hmm. she is and mm -hmm. and i saw the level of defense that was some good old-fashioned high school defense and yep. i just i just take my head off to her to like just because you are in on a different level you can still use what got you there right to excel Right. And so I think that's what she did. I think she she dug hard and dug within herself. She applied everything that she knew how to do what she knew, and she 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 ran with it. And that I think that's why I like South Carolina. They play fundamental basketball. Like they pass their defense. It is just fundamental. They have one full while is like the the one that's that would get out of the box. Like she do a whole lot of you know whatever. But everybody else is really methodical. And I love right. that about him. So Raven Johnson, who was the main person in the second half, she wasn't on her in the first half when she scored like 21 points. <laughs> but the second half, coach let her have it. And this is what happened. Let me see. Do I got it? Do I got it? Is it right here? Yeah. Let's watch this. <laughs> Be a 
I don't think y'all saw that. Let's see it again. <laughs> So all second quarter, Raven Johnson was a thorn in Caitlin Clark's side. Kate, Caitlin Clark only shot three points. And she had she had six free throws, but she only scored nine points in the second half when Raven Johnson he was shut on it her. Down. And people was like, well, Raven Johnson only scored three points. That's all she was supposed to score. <laughs> when you playing defense like that, your legs are not going to allow you to shoot out the gym. Because Raven Johnson can shoot, but mm -hmm. her main focus was to clamp Caitlin Clark down, and she did that. She, she did, did it. And she got in her head. She got, got in her. everything. She, she shut it down. Caitlin Clark was like, okay, this is, my, this is it. <laughs> I don't know where she was at. She slept on her. I think she came in with a level of arrogance. Um, as, and then and I don't know who she was that day. Um, they just shut her down. And, and it, I like it because it wasn't a lot of trash talk. It was demonstration. Right. It was demonstration. Right. None of them talk really. They they really just play basketball, and that's how I know that's what you like, Queen. You want them to just yeah. play, <laughs> just play, just play. Show what me what do. you got, baby. And she did. Let's talk, let's talk about this. Twelve point three million views for the LSU wow. and our game. Okay. Wow. Eighteen point seven million views, wow. and it peaked up to like twenty six million for the wow. championship on Sunday. Are you hearing me? Now, wow. for the WNBA, they had 1.3 million views for their um, championship game this 2023. Um, and their average is 728,000. I'm going somewhere. Stay with me. All right. Mm -hmm. And the NBA finals last year, 11.64 11.64 million views. Listen, these girls have started something that I hope will change women's basketball forever. And I am I I am a person that did not follow the WNBA. I do not still, but I'm going to start because she's going to the WNBA. Um, Reese is going to the WNBA, which I don't think Reese is going to do well, but I saw her in the gym today. <laughs> so maybe she's working on her game. If Reese work on her game, she got the height. If she work on her game, she's going to be okay. Cardoso is going to have to work on it. WNBA or they're going to they gonna tear her up. I believe they're going to tear Caitlin Clark up too because her frame is small. You got the, You have to understand these are grown women. In the WNBA, they don't have cheering. They got hips. They, you know, they <laughs> they can post you down low, and they're gonna yeah. really check you. And it's probably gonna be some flagrant fouls going on just to let her know. Welcome to the WNBA. But mm -hmm. I posted this, um, Diana. I guess they call her DT. And under my post, I said, well, I don't really know who this person is. And somebody was like, well, if you, you don't know basketball, if you don't know. No, I don't know WNBA basketball. Right. Okay. Right. So, and I feel like that the WNBA, I know they're going to be saucy. I know they are. But listen, just like Serena came in and brought a whole new audience to tennis, um, I believe when Serena was playing, the highest match that was that was watched of her was 4.6 million. It peaked at 6.9 because it was her last match. People supported Serena Williams, even if they didn't watch tennis, right? Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't like now Coco Golf is taking over, but Serena Williams paved the way for people. She did. I used to set my clock four o'clock in the morning to watch her play. That's how much I followed Serena. 
So when you have a fan base like Caitlin Clark, and I'm I'm saying her for a reason, because at that game, it was a lot of our fans. <laughs> when she would shoot that ball, that place erupted. So I need for the WNBA, I know it. you feel salty, this little girl coming in here, but she has a fan base. Pay her what she's worth. Yes, she has a pay of the fans. That's what I'm saying. The pay is going to go up, but I know it's going to be salty for those that are in there now because they paved the way. But just oh, like wow. the people paid for <laughs> Serena, Serena is the was the most highest. She was the high, well, almost because all the uh, I'm, I'm gonna say they paved, paved the way in a different aspect from the tennis. But what I'm saying is they didn't get the ones that started, they didn't get as much money as what they're getting now. Right. You know what I'm saying? So the WNBA, the ones that started like DT, I think she's like 40 something years old. Of course, she's going to have to move out the way. But if you are somebody that started it, when it goes further, you still should be happy about, OK, more people are watching the sport versus Oh, you ain't going to. And I think that's the stance that they're taking. Oh, you're not going to come in here and do that. But they need to embrace that girl. But she is because man. she's going to have an agent. Mm -hmm. She's going to have an agent and who's going to vouch for her. And they're going to have to pay her more. Out of all of the ones that's going to the WNBA, Caitlin Clark has the biggest fan base. Mm -hmm. She does. And it's going to follow her. And they're going to have to they're going to have to pay her. Yeah. She can't All right, make I'll, more at Nike than she is on the court by her hotel. Like they got to do it, and and they have to advertise more because I don't even know. Sometimes I'll be watching TV and be like, "Oh, the WNBA is on." They don't. I don't see no commercials. Never <laughs> seen a commercial. See I'm like, so now what? they about to start doing all of that they because these girls to. are coming. So them veterans, they just gonna have to feel salty. They gonna have these, to. Young, these young girls that's coming, they want that money, right? And they because they already got money, see, right? <laughs> Are right. we gonna talk about this and then we're gonna get to the to the what we want to talk about? I need for y'all to like and share because we're gonna be watching Preacher's reunion live, we're gonna be watching it live and we're gonna be reacting live. <laughs> now, this was put up. Uh, LeBron and his son, if you don't know, Bronny has declared for the WNBA. Um, and LeBron said, if he's not drafted where we want him to go, I'm going to make some phone calls. Now, this is being salty worthy. <laughs> he want to go to the WNBA? No, 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 no. The okay. NBA. I said it wrong. Yeah, okay. The NBA. Okay. Yes. Okay. Listen. Listen, listen, listen. He wants sure. to go to the NBA, and his daddy is saying that if he's not drafted where he want to be, we're going to make some phone calls. Now, Lord. I don't think that's fair. Is that a threat? If, I was, a, if fair. I was an NBA player, I would be salty about it. Yeah. That's not fair. That's not fair. That's saying that, oh, my money going to speak for me if my son can't play where I want him to play. Mm-hmm. It, that's not First fair. All, he should not he only he average four points his first year. He only averaged four points mm. and sat on a bench most of his first year. I don't think it's I don't think it's fair. Jermaine Gardner said he wanted to play with him. I understand that you want to play with your son, but there are other people that are more qualified to play the, and the NBA is supposed to be the best of the best then why are we letting him be there just because he's LeBron's son? I don't think that's fair. Not fair. And Not if fair. you, and you, you got so much money. Why don't you, cause Bryce is better than Bronny. Why don't y'all get in the big three? Why don't y'all do that? <laughs> right. You and both of your sons go to the big three. Don't mess with the NBA. Don't tamper with that. And that's when I, I see the sense of entitlement that LeBron has. That is not fair for him to be able to be like, okay, Adam Silver, the commissioner shouldn't even allow that. That's no, what I he think. Shouldn't. 
that's going to tamper with the authenticity of the sport and people right. are going to be turned off and it may even deter people from watching the men listen the, and the, the viewership for the nba has been going down further and further and further because of you know the the competitiveness is not what it used to be and all that kind of stuff like that yeah <laughs> donovan said they would get cooked in the big three they're gonna get cooked in the nba that man that boy is not ready he is not ready but anyway queen thank you for coming on we are about to watch <laughs> this yep. has got to be so good y'all y'all listen what we are about to do right now i don't know if it's legal or not <laughs> but i didn't want to watch this alone okay so we are about to watch preachers okay the reunion live okay we're about to watch Preachers Reunion live. Did you hear what I said? Somebody type live. Somebody type live, 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 live. We're about to watch it live together. Um, I was very, I was so invested in this show. Okay. Um, I followed it like none other. I really followed this show. So I know the characters in it, not characters, the cast in and out. So, <laughs> uh-oh, I hope y'all are still here. Um, Instagram, if not, you need to go to um, Facebook and YouTube. Anyway, we're about to watch it. Like and share. Like to hear, hear it go. Mm. I can't hear. Where is the sound? Oh. <laughs> Everybody wants to get into the living line hell. Got the whole church dug and you open that to the hell. Find it all in the world if nobody wants us to hell. But it ain't free time, not about the devil in your soul. Oh, 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 we got the roof back together. It's been 10 years since we've last seen some of LA's most dynamic pastors, preachers, and speakers of the word. Well, I think 10 years has been long enough. I am Kim Whitley and I'll be your host for this much anticipated and might I add long overdue reunion. It is good to see you bishops and pastors and we missing, where's that? Yeah, we missing that bishop, uh, McClendon. That you know, oh, yes. yeah, he always busy, ain't he? Yeah, I'm sure he is just, you know, not, some things don't ever change. I'm sure he is very busy, and, and we, we bless you, sir. Right. But I wanted to see you here. Um, the Brotherhood is here. Miss Kim, oh, good yes, to meet you. Now, oh, good to meet Looking you. Looking beautiful as ever. Really Thank you. I love, I love your look. I love that you, 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 you don't look like a traditional pastor. You come with your own style. Oh, no, I'm not traditional. No, you. I'm foundational, though. Okay, but do you consider yourself the bad boy of the gospel? No, oh, I'm I'm probably the nicest one out of all this group right here. What just nice? nice. I'm the, I'm listen, the, listen, I'm the, listen I'm you the, have many nice that? you have yeah. many nice bad boys. Yes, sir. Okay. There you go. In fact, some of the baddest yeah, boys in the world are, are nice. Boy. You were arguing with him at the, at the dinner. That was McClendon. He was no, arguing no, with us. No, no, he was the, he liked arguing with me. At dinner, oh, what, you remember when he and Dominique? Boom. Yeah. When they were shacking. Uh, see, no. here we go. Right, okay. that part, that's what we were talking about when you got it. And I was trying to tell him back then. He said shacking is not in the Bible. It's, 
No, shacking is not the issue. You want to deal with the issue. The fornication is the issue, not the shacking. Because the shacking was really the overlay for the oh, underplay. That's what you question. really wanted to know. Oh. And I would have just told you, yes, I've had sex. You've had sex. We all have had sex. At the time, I was struggling in that area. Okay. As a young man. But, and I had a baby to show for it on the show. Yes, I and saw so, the child. You know, since then, I've, I've, I've married my beautiful wife. But now we've just celebrated 10 years. Fantastic. Wow. Let's talk about that. All the wonderful things that has taken place within the 10 years. That's right. The issue was really the sex issue. But see, when he mentioned that on the show, that thing followed me for the last 10 years. You shacking? Well, Dietrich hadn't said shacking is okay. I never said shacking was okay. Okay. I'm that listening. came from him. But, he but, brought that but, up. but now you're being contradictory. No, 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 no. That's what I thought. Yeah, because you're making a point that you can shack and still not sin. How many of us, and, and, and he's been divorced. I have been divorced. Okay. I've been divorced. You've been a divorce. And you've been divorced. I've never been married. Okay, cool. And my marriage I, is still in force. I never thought in my life that I could be in bed with a woman and never want to touch her. Ooh, because it was fire in your bosom. No. No, uh -huh. it's because you, the you relationship. Don't you don't want to touch the relationship. The relationship, the relationship had deteriorated. Mm -hmm. To the point that even in a marriage, some of his wife, first wife, yes. even in a marriage, you didn't, didn't want to go to bed. Right. Got it. You understand me? A long standing beef we saw on Preachers of LA, but also something we will see on this new Preachers Wedding Edition. Oh, it is airing on Merge TV. So now, when it comes to love and marriage, though, <laughs> Bishop Ron Gibson had a lot to say. <laughs> oh, when it came to Bishop Noel Jones. He seemed to have a slow walk to the altar, and you had a lot to say about it. Bishop Jones, why haven't you committed to Loretta and asked her to marry you? He says, I was married, yes. and I'm, I'm messed up in my mind. I'm conflicted about this. Why can't I hear Bishop tell you? Why were you on him so hard? Well, Kim, that's a good question, okay? And I have a good answer. A good answer is a God answer. I'm not just talking about and answer. Bishop Noel Jones is an icon. I know he talks about the iconoclastic and all those big words that you shouldn't put a pre preacher on a pedestal and make him so iconoclastic. Remember that? But he's, he's articulate like that. But when you are a preacher, a general in the faith, like Bishop Noel Jones is, then you have a lot of young men that are watching him. He's mentoring a lot of young men. So it came to my mind since he has so many young men gravitating to him and want to be like him, be a mentor and not a tormentor. Tormenting them in the sense of making them think it's okay to date a queen like Loretta, who he was dating. One of the most beautiful ladies outside of my wife in the world today, okay? And it didn't look good, especially after he revealed that he was dating her for 14 years. The Bible says, not Ron Gibson, not Dietrich Haddon. Okay, pause. <laughs> so far, the scripture. <laughs> All right. If you don't know, okay, the guy with the dreads. I see Annette Houston said the other preacher she don't know. Okay, so the guy with the dreads is um, Dietrich Hatton. The guy with the mustache and the 70s afro is Bishop Ron Gibson. And everybody know Bishop Noel Jones. Um, Loretta calls him Noel. We call him Noel because we from the United States. Um, I'm very much invested in learning why Bishop Jones way, but now now that I'm hearing him talk, Bishop Jones seemed like he had some uh, trauma as it relates to marriage because he went right into talking about being in a bed with a woman that you don't even want to touch her. Like I don't I don't know who his first wife was. Um, but he had to be in such a bad way 
um, that he just, and I think him working through those, he had to work through those things. Now, 14 to 18 years of working through, Loretta is a strong woman. <laughs> Because, honey, there is not, and I used to say, don't you Loretta me, but now I understand that it sounds like that he had a lot of trauma relating to marriage. I thought it was because he is an Islander, um, and I think he has like some apostolic background. I thought he just didn't believe in second marriages. Um but he was dating her for this long. So I don't know. And we all knew about Dietrich and, you know, and his wife. I love. <laughs> I just know you ain't put this on in this chat. <laughs> I'm laughing because it has been said that, can I say this? Allegedly, it has been said that, you know, Bishop is not Bishop no more. He's not, he's not fiery <laughs> like he used to be. And I'm doing my hand for a reason. It's not, it's limp. <laughs> And when they, I think Loretta is just happy to be married, y'all. Because even when they did like the Instagram, um, the the Instagram live and everything like that, she was just like, I'm just happy the wedding. She was just talking about the wedding and not no love and nothing like that. She was just like the wedding. I was like, okay, she about to get a piece of coin because honey, ain't no way. And, and she got bopped in the face. Did y'all y'all know she got bopped in the face, right? After 18 years, there is no way I'm gonna bop get bopped in my face over you over you. All these years, I ain't get bopped in the face. Now that I'm married to you, not even a year later, I get hit in the face, get knocked clean out at the church. You gotta be kidding me. All right, let's <laughs> That's what it's called when a woman marries an old man as they need someone to take care of himself. Now, I don't know. I don't know if that's his case, but that's what I heard. It sounds like he did. He talked about how they did not teach him about loving himself and didn't teach him about him about sex. Now, you can't tell me that Bishop John, mm -mm. Mm -mm. He know how to have sex, and he loves sex, but he just old now. That's what I think. That's what I think. All right, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. Not Wayne Cheney, not Bishop Noel Jones. The Bible says that don't let your good be evil spoken of. That's totally out of context, that one. That scripture doesn't apply to anything you just said. Okay, well, let's go to this then. How can a man, how, how can a man take fire in his bosom and not get burned? How can you have a beautiful lady like that? But they were friends. What my understanding and, and, and I couldn't and, know and, and No, no, they were more than friends because because Loretta said on the show, if you recall, she wanted to marry Bishop Jones after she said she didn't want to. Oh, but then she recanted and said, I do so she want to marry. And so when you're in a relationship right like that, it just doesn't look good for young men that are aspiring to be ministers like like Bishop Jones. Right, but but why did it bother you so much? You were passionate about this, because I'm gonna be honest with you. If this man ain't ready to marry me, I don't want him to marry me, because we're gonna have more than fire in my bosom. <laughs> I'm gonna have fire on the stove. That's a good point, Jim. <laughs> Jim. See, one, of, one of the things that Ron has not accounted for in a okay. relationship with Loretta is that Loretta is a very independent, very strong, uh, woman. Okay. I didn't want okay. a quiet, uh, passive right. woman who I could control. Yeah, well, uh, well, I, wanted well, a woman, I wanted a woman who was equal. Never came up as the point he made. We didn't know that then. I don't think right. the world knew it. That he had proposed before. That's true. That's we didn't true. know that. You're exactly right. And heard no. 
And I think the only person that I'm tormenting yes, is Ron now, Gibson. Did, so you were tormenting Loretta. Now, did Bishop no, Ron no, not at all. No, Loretta, no, Sister Loretta. Not at all. Bishop, was his constant reminder that you have not gotten married, when you're going to get married, uh, did that get on your nerves? It didn't bother me one, one bit. Really? Oh, no. And I'm telling you why. Because when you have a certain amount of security about who you are, and then when you understand the person who everybody's talking about in relationship to you getting married to her, mm -hmm. when you understand those dynamics, then you're not moved by it. I'm only moved by a sincere word from her, but she can't propose to me. I have to propose to her. Facts. Good man. And, and that's the whole point. And she can't rush the process or she, can't, 14 or, years. or she can't slow the process Are you talking about a nationality or reality? You, you, you Russian see, or Russian? See, as a single pastor, mm -hmm. someone who waited 14 years and yes, someone sir. who, again, said he should have done it the moment that she signified the intention. I didn't say that. How, how long should a pastor wait? It depends. It's collecting data. You gotta wait as long as you can. I want to know how long. Can I answer long, that very succinctly? Sure. Dating is a derivative from the word data, okay. where you get information. When you date a person, they don't show you their character; they show you their personality. It took me 14 years to collect data. Oh, <laughs> oh that's man! All that was, okay. Oh lord! By his own definition, lord, as long day. as it took. Do you know what 14 yes. years ago? Do you have yeah. something personal with Loretta? I think under the Thank surface, Thank he you admires helping. Loretta. That's not under the surface. I, I do. He admires, I admire, but I don't desire. But, but I have a beautiful now, wife myself. I've noticed this. There is no admire without some modicum of desire. There is no admire. Yes, sir. Without a modicum okay. of desire. Okay. What's this modicum? Let me bring this. Modicum. Modicum. Can you huh? jump in, please? <laughs> Sister, I got a class. You figure it out. <laughs> Wait a minute. He's somebody look it up. What's a modicum? <laughs> Bishop Jones, I think, like I said, I believe that um, there is a, there was some type of, I don't know. I just think there was something there. Ron Gibson, I believe is infatuated with Loretta, right? But he said a mighty calm. <laughs> but I agree. I don't think it should have took that long. But then again, like I said, it seemed like he was working through some things. It just seemed like he was working through some things. What do y'all think? Do y'all think that he's, he was working through some things? But I still don't agree that it should have took that long, like for real, for real. And I don't like how, let, let me tell you this, with Cheney, I am, this, this is, this is, this, this is my bias because I invited Maisha Cheney, which is his ex-wife, um, former wife to my event. She had a she had a book called "Hiding Behind the Lipstick," and <laughs> and she came to my event, which I had the beauty campaign at the time. And for me to hear him say, "I'm single," no nigga, you are divorced. You're not single. And I think sometimes pastors forget, and, and especially if you are in the limelight, okay, you are in the spotlight and we all knew if we followed this show 10 years ago, you were married to Maisha Cheney. We're not going to bury Maisha Cheney just because y'all are divorced. And I saw when, the, when this came out today, I follow her. 
So I watched social media and I saw that she came and said, you know, I'm going to be on a hiatus for a while. Um, whatever. I don't know if it has anything directly to do with what's going on with this show that, you know, this reunion and anything like that. But I don't like the way she was done. OK, I'm just going to put it out there. I don't like that. I am an advocate for first ladies, not saying that I was done in any type of way. But the first lady is always the second lady. When you are a first lady of the church, you better understand that them people are going to follow their leader. When you are out of the picture, they're not going to check on you. <laughs> they're not. And I don't like that he does not. It's like he's he's I don't know. I'm I'm I, maybe I'm just looking. But when I just saw him say I'm single. No, you, you're divorced. You're not single. Trying to make it seem like that she don't exist. Don't do that. Don't. Let me tell you something. If this keep going on in that way, y'all going to see. Because uh, I'm going to fight for my sister. That is crazy. Like, what, what are you talking about? And I know she said she was going to take a hiatus. Then she said she was recording and she was doing whatever. Um, I have a soft heart for first ladies. Um, even Dominique. I love Dominique. I love the way that she's herself. She's not really in a box trying to be like, um, I don't, I, I don't, you know, and then last night they was on live and it was like, and I think Dr. Carter, Dr. Holly was like the bachelor. Sir, you're not a bad. Don't do that. Do not do that. Okay. Don't do that. You're going to piss me off. Don't do it. All right. Let's keep watching. See what the heck. Because he's sitting there like he about to piss me off. <laughs> That's what he's doing. He's sitting there like he about to piss me off. But we're going to see what he's talking about. Because. I just. Jump in. What they put this? I need to hear your there thoughts. Does Ron need to know? Desire. Bishop point. Ron Gibson need to know that marriage is not the solution to everybody's lust problem. I never said that is. But you're you saying you're, be with you're saying that marriage you preacher is better to marry than to burn. Yeah, but that's that we've used that to get these young people and, and in marriages, and, 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 and when they get in I it, it's a mess. That's true, teacher. It's and so that's to... why the divorce rate is at all time high within the church because of that kind of teaching. It's better to come. I'm a victim of that. Let's... When when Bishop got married. They were wailing and crying. I'm sorry, they were. There were some women who were wailing and crying. And I didn't understand why I could not sit in the front row. Now, I didn't know that pastors and bishops went through this, but women would sit in the front row. Yeah. I, I might not say what I heard. Yeah, open their leg. Wow. I'd have panties on in the house of the Lord. While I'm preaching. Coming up on Preacher's Reunion. I lose my career. I lose my life. When, when Bishop got married, they were wailing and crying. I'm sorry, they were. There were some women who were wailing and crying. And I didn't understand why I could not sit in the front row. Now, I didn't know that pastors and bishops went through this, but women would sit in the front row. Yeah. I, I might not say what I heard. Yeah, open their leg. Wow. I'd have panties on in the house of the Lord. While I'm preaching. While he's <laughs> preaching. Yeah. In the front row. And now I, I, I didn't understand the security and all this, but I saw it, what you all go through with my own eyes, that the devil is busy mm. and they're going to come at you at all angles. So you have to be a strong man or a strong preacher because it was, it's difficult for your congregation to understand what's going on unless they're in your circle. So a lot is going on that you all probably don't even know. So when I say what he went through or whatever he's gone through and all the women and all that, for mm -hmm. all of you. Data goes both ways, right? It's not only a potential mate, but it's introspective data to, to calculate you know, how much damage there was from the previous situation, you know, financial implications, right? right? Um, trust breached, you know, these are all things that have to be navigated. Sometimes, again, the great 
candidates there, but the reality is, you, you know, there's got to be some introspection. And I don't know that we can put a timeline on that. Well, wait, 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 hold up. This sounds like something personal. <laughs> no, uh, no, you're not going to make it personal. Well, but I mean, <laughs> obviously, you've gone through some yeah, things sure. and you can share with us. Sure. Uh, are you collecting data uh, and the things that you've gone through? Has it your divorce now? Do you feel like maybe your spirit or, or is damaged somewhat and you need time to repair it? Well, the beauty is it's, it's been almost a couple of years. It's been almost a couple of years. Uh, you know, it, it feels fresh to many people, but it, it's been significant time. So I feel, feel healthy um, with regard to that. But there's no experience we have that doesn't change our lens, the lens we see the world with. And so my prescription is definitely updated. Um, and um, there, there are certain things you, you didn't see at 20 uh, that you see at 44. And um, it makes you process a little bit more. You evaluate things from a financial standpoint. Process uh, and finances. You, yeah, you, you, you evaluate um, uh, you know, small idiosyncrasies. Yeah. That you don't have the time on this end to discover 15 years from now. Right. So I, I believe process is significant. And uh, I was actually looking to glean some wisdom uh, from two of the, 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 these two gentlemen um, as relates to that. Uh, but what I do know is this time around, I'm not selecting anyone for the church. One. Or for the broader community. That's definite. It, it has to be for me. So it has to be for me. Yes. are you dating? Are you single? What's, what's going on? Are there women sitting in the front row that need a thing put over their legs? What's, what's going on? We haven't had to throw any lap scarves. <laughs> so the women are being, uh, but you know, after processing for a while, and um, you know, I think processing well, I'm definitely uh, open to new experiences. Yeah. Are you open for reconciliation? Oh. No. What is reconciliation? Like, if you had a gentleman like Mr. Jones, Dietrich, myself, to counsel you as a support system to perhaps for reconcile for my for my uh, to reconcile with your first wife. No. Okay, you've been divorced. Do you have any advice for Pastor Cheney? I think he defined. Now, Bishop Gibson is old school. Do you hear me? The first thing that came out of his mouth was, are you open to reconciliation? <laughs> now, Bishop, you got a, he got a cool point with me when it came to that <laughs> because that is old school right there and that is why i stayed married to my my um my only husband i can say my first husband my only husband for years we got divorced got remarried got divorced and got remarried because we didn't believe in second marriages and he definitely did. So I'm like, wow. And then him for, for him to say no, like he said, Maisha, 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 if you hear my voice, I need you to come put on, put a pin in it. Maisha. <laughs> At least I tried two times around. This man is saying no with a haughty nose too, like he is all the way, nose is clean. I don't get it. Maisha, I need you. I need you to come speak your peace, sweetheart. Let's keep watching this mess, cause they, let me tell you something, preachers, they talk around the bin. The stuff that they've said, they could have been done said it 15 minutes ago. We still trying to figure out what you try to say since it started. Uh, that the wife find it a good thing and obtains favor with the Lord. It, it's a man's decision to get into a marriage, and it's that same man's decision to exit the marriage. And God gives him that authority to make that decision based on what he's experiencing in the marriage. And you can't control individuals in the marriage. You can't you can't control a human being how they think, how they feel, what they decide to do. If a woman decides to make a move, what can you do about that? So we got to be careful about this blanket. Uh, communication that makes people feel that have had to get out of marriages for millions of different reasons 
They've had to get out of it. For instance. For, for their own sanity. For instance, what reason? I had to get out of my marriage for no, my own sanity. No, as germane to him. No, what I well, like to say, I think it was important. his decision to, get, to he, defined, he found her. He made a decision to get into it for whatever reason, without getting into his personal business. Right. He had to make an executive decision between the two to part ways. Right. And, and all three of us here have had to do that. You've been, you've been the only one okay. that's been uh, so... Uh, Pause right there. So I don't know if y'all remember, but there was a post that was made by Cheney that he, he and Maisha were getting divorced. But Maisha didn't know that he was going to post it. So she had to double back and say, I didn't know that we were going to make this public, but okay, yes, we are getting divorced. And her life is shattered. So it's different for the wife than it is for the husband. Because like I said, the congregation is going to back the husband. Okay? They're, he, they're going to back him no matter what. So now it's you that has to put all the pieces together. He did post it. He posted first, and then she posted that she didn't know that he was going to post. I remember that. Yes, he did. I don't know if it's still up, but I remember because she she posted, because I follow her. I don't follow him. So her post was in response to his. And so... And I was like, oh, God, you know, it was it was hard for me to even fathom what was going on. But let me tell you all something. When I met her in person, I almost quickened. I said. I, I she, we had to get her a room and stuff like that. She was so nice. She was so nice. And but when I looked at her, I said. No ding to her. OK, no ding to her. I said to myself, this will be the last time I invite someone to do a conference that I can do myself because I felt like I was more equipped than her. She was broken, trying to talk about hiding behind a lipstick when she was hiding behind the lipstick. You know what I'm saying? So that's what, look, at, look you're late. <laughs> so I feel, and she did do good, but I, could, I felt her heart. I felt like, man, I really need to, you know, check me. Because I was looking up to her, really, because she's on TV. I'm like, okay, dang, you know, she on TV, all this kind of stuff like that. But I felt like I needed to lay hands on her. That's what I mean by that. So here we go. Let's keep watching this. Y'all preachers need to do better with y'all talking. Lord, I mean, around and around and around and around the bend. Lord, okay, let me do this for um Carolyn because everybody don't know preachers. All right. The man that looks like the man from the love boat is Bishop Ron Gibson, the man with the mustache, the man with the, the looks like he's from the seventies that got on this, um, knitted sweater and <laughs> he looked like a hippie. That's Dietrich. And the man with the shades on is Bishop Noel Jones. The one that Loretta, we say, don't Loretta me. He is uh he is Bishop Noel Jones, the one with the, the shades on. And the guy that's I'm talking about that I'm harping on that's pissing me off is Bishop, is um Pastor Cheney. Okay. Because he pissing me off. Are you are you are you um willing to for re reconciliation? No. Man, forget you too. What you talking about? No to you too, nigga. Blessed in that area. 
Does, but it doesn't make you better than any of us. I didn't say that, did I? I just want to make it clear. Or anybody that had to make that decision. If I listen to religious thinking, it'll have me locked into something and be miserable. Never would have my family. Never would have seen the other side of my life. So I really don't. Uh-oh. Can y'all hear me? Something happened. Ugh. They said Bishop McClendon is going to be on um, next week. I don't know what just happened here. I feel like it got stuck or something. Hold on while I'm trying to fix that. Oh, there it go. All right, here we go, y'all. I'm sorry for breathing in y'all face. Other, I'm living my truth. Wayne is living his truth. Uh, uh, Bishop has lived his truth 14 years, and now he's married, happily married. What am I living you live in your truth. Oh, you've been married to a little bit. And you that's your, that's you, though. That has nothing to do with happiness. But that's Life you. is not a, a flower bed of ease. You're going to have some mountains and some valleys in marriage. Okay? Oh, yes, we do know that. Two Absolutely. different people. Are you happy? Are you together. not happy now? That takes are you happy? Am I happy? Yes, are you happy? Sometimes I am. Sometimes, I'm, sometimes I feel like a nut. Sometimes I don't. <laughs> you figure that part out. There's a difference between being above the radar and under the radar. We deal with so many people in our churches who have divorces, whose marriages break down, but they are under the radar. His position in relationship to me was so many people are iconoclastic in their view of an individual like me, which means then that I have to have a standard and I have to exemplify behavior that is equivalent to how they view me or how they want to follow me. Now, what everybody should understand is we get that. We know that. So the question that people like Ron should ask is, what in the world was going on in the house of an individual who knows how he's going to be viewed who knows the pain that he's going to have to deal with, who knows how he's going to be judged by the majority of the people who's looking at him. What in the hell is going on in his house that in spite of all that he has to face, he decides with his children with his grandchildren, with grandparents, with the congregation, with the other pastors, he, if he moves to divorce, mm -hmm. they need to say something horrific mm -hmm. has to be happening in that household My God. for him to make that decision. And then I secondly, come on. secondly, the issue of how long it took me to marry. How long it took me to marry was contingent also upon the fact that I had to reconcile in my mind that it was all right to marry again while my former wife was still living. Wow. So when you put all of the pressures That's deep. that we have to deal with when we move into a situation where we're saying this ain't gonna work and I lose my career, I lose my life, I lose whatever I have gained, but I can't stay here. And nobody seems to understand that we have calculated doubt to the last minute. We've all taken that in. 
I've taken that in. The things and the people at home watching, I'm sure have taken that in. Because like I said before, we have no idea how you all live your lives. That was powerful. And I thank you for that, uh, Bishop. Thank you for being vulnerable. Um, uh, yeah. I received that and I just, I, right now, I, this is a good time to bring out the wives. Let's welcome First Lady Loretta Jones and First Lady Lavette Gibson. Um, we missing somebody. Where's my girl? How many? Dominique. Yeah. She was good on the show. Where is she? On the show. But you know, Dominique is, uh, she's Mrs. Her mother. Mm -hmm. And this represents her mother. We found, she, she had a heart attack. And, and Dominique found her. Her and the kids found her. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, and uh, she was having some issues with her heart, but we didn't know it was that to that extent, you know. Mm -hmm. She sends her love to all the ladies. Yeah. And, uh, and, and mm -hmm. I, I represent her. And a big shout out to Dominique. You are missed. You are missed, Dominique. Well, I mean, you're close to uh, McClendon and Dietrich. Like, how is that being in the middle of this uh, ongoing beef? Well, you understand the idiosyncratic differences between them. And, uh, and when you adjudicate, you don't take sides. You got to pick a side, Bishop. No, no, we don't. <laughs> you you don't take side. sides. See, one of the things is when he's right, he's right. When Mac is right, he's right. He's never right. He's never right. A man standing over a man and talking down to him is never right. No, no. That's the, I'm he a Detroit wrong. guy. He was wrong at that point. He was wrong. There we yeah. go. That's at what that for. point, he Did was wrong. Did you tell him he was wrong? Bishop? Oh, yeah. He was wrong My at that point. Okay, we're going to pause one second because somebody said, now, remember I said not unless Bishop Noel Jones is like old school. And he kind of alluded to the fact that he had to work within himself to be okay we, with remarrying while his former wife is alive. Y'all, that's old school. And I told y'all that's why I got married and remarried to my, my only husband, my first only husband, two times. Because we really didn't believe in second marriages. Um, and it really wasn't that bad. Um, and that's why I stick my nose up at Cheney when he said, you know, there's no um, no room for reconciliation. No. What? Don't do that. Don't do that. Because I would get by each on my show and we would talk about you. Don't do that. <laughs> But anyway, so Bishop Jones went through a lot of calculation. So he didn't say within between the lines, but I can read between the lines. So somewhere in there, Loretta got to be pop offish, okay? Because he said, Do I want to marry this woman? And then I in the midst of this, I lose everything. So is this the woman that I want to marry? Do I trust her enough to let her be in all of my business? Right? Um, it's I can see now because Bishop Noah Jones is a is a is a wealthy man. Sounds like he has a good head on his shoulders. He know how to talk around the bend here and again. Um but I can see Loretta is calculating too. So he knows that about her and he knows that she knows a lot of things about him that probably everybody, nobody else really knows. Um, so I think he's like, dang if I do and dang if I don't. <laughs> but I believe Loretta loves him. I do. I believe she loves him. But I know that it had to be, it, it, it has to, something about their relationship to me seems a little, he's like, uh, 
Uh, I love Loretta, but they're just y'all don't know her like I know her. <laughs> Point in case she got bopped. She got bopped at the church. Somebody, can, I have never been bopped in church as the first lady. <laughs> I have never been knocked out cold. You know, I'm not even saying that it's her fault, but I'm just saying it's just it's just, it's chaotic. She bring her dog to church every Sunday. I just feel like she don't play with him, right? And I think she knows too much of his business to let her go that's that's just what i feel and you know but they married now she's married he's married they're all married um uh, but that cheney honey you pissing me off tonight i knew somebody was gonna piss me off but condolences to um dominique i love dominique i i've said it she's unique i love her um, and I hate that she didn't make it. So let's see what they got to say. That point, <laughs> but uh, but when he's wrong, he's wrong. But you've been wrong too. Not in that matter. Not in that matter. No, definitely not. But but I she find said, no fault in. Uh, she Clarence. said ongoing beef. But I don't think it's no, ongoing. No, it's not ongoing? Oh, no. I, I think he has an all ongoing beef with me. No, it's not the McCoys and the... Who was the other well, it's 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 nothing like that. No, 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 no. no well, no. the issue started because of an entourage, right? You were... No, no, he stood up and said, son. No, she said when the, it the started... The whole discussion was about... I think. The honorary oh, and the over, entourage. It over the entourage. And, well, I mean, how did you start over the honorary? Where, where the honorary? Yeah, yeah. Yes, the, I uh, still believe that the entourage should. was predicated. The honorarium was predicated on the entourage. Boom. So, because he's got a big entourage, oh. that means big honorary. And you had a problem with and the entourage of honorary. It could come without having his entourage and, and without a certain amount of money. Doc, well, when you didn't have anybody there, God he, called you. you yeah, but he go. should be here to defend you. He was going for chicken dinners, preaching everywhere. When you're trying it's to get your here, name so out there, now your name in lights, now you've got to have an entourage. Just, the people's needs are different. Uh, for instance, for instance, uh, my wife may need a makeup person with her. Then she needs a security person with her. With all the things she's been through, she needs a security person with her. No, let's get to it, First Lady Loretta. You came in with a large entourage. It's my staff. It's your sta staff entourage. Yeah, they, they work for me. And, and then you got to have somebody take care of my dogs. So right. Yeah, have dog. Take care of the, the makeup, the, the makeup, clothes, and, and the then someone to take care of them. The, the, well, is a beautiful, classy lady who needs that. Does he need that? But is Mac he a beautiful, classy but lady Mac or a man? But Mac is a handsome man who needs that. Oh, is he? I'm about to scream right now. <laughs> oh, well, he got a point there. Mac got his that thing is true. Together. He got his thing, too. Okay. You know, so, right. so you do know, we have a problem? Need. No. That's, that's hey. what you need. Do we have a problem with the first lady having an entourage? Coming up on Preacher's Reunion. When Jesus was getting ready to leave the Garden of Gethsemane. Yes. He says, Peter, do you have your swords with you? Yes. Peter said, I have two of them. Yes. Jesus said, that's enough. Let's roll, big homie. He was, and it's in Luke 22, 38, to let you know you can carry a 22 and a 38. So why I, just, I just carry a nine, though. Do we have a problem with the First Lady having an entourage? See, what ha what's happening when we're here, I had to wait for two hours. We were working. We're working on other projects. I just can't sit with idle time. We have to work. So everybody was working? Yes, it was working. We were emailing and calling people back, putting things in place because we're opening a new church. And so we need to be available. Okay. Now you feel about that? I think it's wonderful. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Dietrich. I don't, Dietrich, do you have an entourage? A staff, I'm sorry. Staff? I have a staff. You have staff. They don't travel with me. 
but I, you know, I don't need makeup and, and all the stuff, you know, I don't. And then we have the puppies and then, you know, have yeah. to have a sitter with them. No, but I'll be honest. Let's, let's, uh, now let's just be honest. People looking at this feel a certain way. When well, they, they say, well, first lady got somebody, can, she got to watch the dogs, feel... she got to watch. What do you say? I'm, I'm, you go, I'm just talking for the people. Okay. You know how they They feel. are entitled to feel what they feel. You can only do what you can afford to do. And if you can afford to do that, it's your money. People, when they see that you're doing well and you wear what and live well, some people don't like that. Um, you know, you talk about, when you talk about what well, people don't like and things happening, you mentioned security and we talked about entourage. And, uh, you know, we are, I've been knowing them for a while, friends with uh, Lady Loretta. And uh, you had an incident where you were attacked. I, 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 I didn't believe it. As much security as the bitch got all around me, I could not believe that someone would actually attack you. And how are you doing with that? And can you explain what happened? Or, you know, this is your, your opportunity to give your side. Well, I think it bothers her a great deal to even talk about it. Now I've made sure that I've got one person around her who you better not come close because I had to do something to fix that. And she's still insecure about it. She's nervous when someone comes close to her. But she has every right to be able to stand at a pulpit and talk to people. And then some of these people are literally deranged. And we have to deal with the mental health that is circling in our churches. I've been knowing you, and I guess, I, if you don't mind, I, 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 I see, I feel a sense of quietness in you. And I'm, I'm just wondering since this attack, if you feel like, how, are you, how do you move forward? The problem is when you're in a church environment, you let your guards yeah. down, period. So now I got a gangster security man. Uh -oh. I got, and it's my job to protect her. What do you mean by gangster? That's why I don't pray with my gangster. Eyes. Gangster, you know what you're talking about. It's <laughs> alert. No, you, you <laughs> understand gangster. You know, know gangster. You know gangster. Now you're talking about gangster. Anybody know gangster, you know gangster. You're probably carrying your gat right now. Are in, they other words, in other words, I have a security group now. Yeah. She looked like my dear, didn't she? Can I say something? This is my wife. She asked about my wife. Okay, I'm sorry. Can you cool off? I'm sorry. She wasn't bit. always your wife. Yeah, she is now. Okay. All right, yes, Reverend. sir. Protect your wife. Is it okay? I gotta protect my okay. wife. And, and speaking of protection, do you feel some sense of, I wouldn't say maybe some sense of guilt or something? I felt that that inadequate. Happened? I felt inadequate. I felt a sense of inadequacy and say, uh, and 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 in, in Doc's word, I done waited this long to marry a woman and then you have somebody clobber her. Right. You see what I'm saying? I feel quite inadequate. And then, uh, then you start dealing with the issues of forgiveness mm -hmm. and your ability to forgive somebody who has done this kind of thing. And Wait, did he say clobber her? <laughs> Y'all, it's not funny now, but golly, what the hell? And I keep seeing y'all say, I see you saying, why is he speaking for her? Um, I think, <laughs> I think he's saying this because I think he's talking for her because she is very insecure about that, but she ain't insecure about talking about her staff. The people that take care of the dog, the people that do the emailing, the people that do this, and the people that she's very happy about her situation. But that man said, clobbered.
But y'all remember, I covered this and I said, he waited all this. He said everything I said. Of course, I felt inadequate. I don't wait all this long time to marry her. And somebody clobbered her. And somebody clobbered her. Oh my God. Oh my God. Whew. That is funny to me. At least I said bop. He said clobbered. <laughs> oh God, it's all. <laughs> I had to stop. But you can tell. Y'all, okay, from what I said earlier, from what we saw now, like I said, Loretta is a lot. Okay, she got this man crying on TV. What sort of TV? Stream. She got him crying on stream streaming. Merge TV. <laughs> oh, God, that was a joke, but y'all didn't get it. Uh, <laughs> she got this man crying, not knowing that if he marry her and it don't work out, is he going to lose everything? And now we see why. Bishop, I ain't all those things. I I believe I was the perfect first lady. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't need much. I didn't need much. But God knows, Loretta is a lot. Loretta is a lot. If you believe Loretta is a lot, put a one in the chat. If you believe she is smooth selling. You put a two in the chat. But if you believe that woman is a lot, put a one. I I let me see. Let me see. I see a one. <laughs> I see another one. <laughs> one one. <laughs> Dang. Y'all is going. <laughs> Do I have any twos in here? She got Bishop Noel Jones crying on stream, because it ain't TV. She got him crying, wondering. This man wears shades all the time now. I ain't, he had on shades last night. He got on shades on this. We used to always see his face. <laughs> This man is stressed. <laughs> Even last night, she's supposed to be talking about this show. She is promoting her cookbook. Baby, I, I, the Bishop, I'm sorry. I see now why you waited so long, <laughs> especially after coming out of a traumatic divorce you know he he was i think bishop was broken from his first marriage he kind of seemed like he really loved his first wife um but it just didn't work out because he was even saying he had to work some stuff out but clobber i gotta put that in my word bank for sure <laughs> That was funny. All right, we almost done because they talk so darn much. Jesus Christ. And then you've got to end up being Christ-like in a situation mm -hmm. that, and then you expect her to reduce how she feels in a situation that is so anti who she is because she would never do that to anyone. Mm -hmm. In this case, this case was a case where it was, this lady was known. Wow. You had never had a woman come after you in your church. I have women come after me. Secret. You've been I have women come after me all the time. Talk to Dietrich, and they you know, know he's married. All the time. Brother. All the time. Uh, Dominique, yeah. play that. <laughs> she throw hands and elbows. Hands and the church know it. Listen, listen. Wait. Wait. Loretta said, there are people, people that try to talk to Deetra all the time when he come to our church. She messy too. 
<laughs> Deetra had heard him say, and, uh, and Dominique don't play that. Oh, come on. Stop it. Let me stop, y'all. I'm just playing. Let's keep going. We almost done. Listen, let, let me make a point. Let me make a point. Of the making of beautiful women, there is no end. We have to end it. Wait, what's that mean? That simply means no matter how old you are, no matter what your calling is, if you're in the public, somebody's going to like you. Mm -hmm. But you have to end it. You have to say, I'm with her and I will be with nobody else. That's good. Because no matter where you look, no matter how old you get, beautiful women are coming every day from every age. And the older you get doesn't minimize the attention. Men hit on my wife in front of my face. I slap them and say, that's my wife. No, no, no. The Bible says lay hands on the sick. The Bible says <laughs> he'll recover. Okay. I'm going to put you in time, man. You've been violent. I'm going to tell you why. You mess with this. Now he's, he's stepping on Mr. Bible. Gilmore's property. He's quoting the Bible to be violent. Now. Did you go through a metal detector before you came in here? Are you strapped right now? Did you go through the metal detector? Oh, no, no. She's asked me, Bishop. No, I, no I, games. I don't. don't I'm going to tell you the truth. It's not a game, but we live in America. Okay? And we have an I'll amendment. Quote the Bible to the assailant. Okay. The okay. I quote the Bible. Oh. Quote the, the Bible, Bible to the assailant. I quote the Bible to the assailant. Yeah. In Luke 22, 38. Uh -huh. Okay. What, what chapter? 22, 22 38. verse 38. Yeah. When Jesus was getting ready to leave the Garden of Gethsemane. Yes. He says, Peter, do you have your swords with you? Yes. Peter said, I have two of them. Yes. Jesus said, that's enough. Let's roll, big homie. He was, and it's in Luke 22, 38, to let you know you can carry a 22 and a 38. So why I, just, I just carry a nine, no. Coming up on Preacher's Reunion. Oh, no, oh. Oh, what she mean by we judging, Loretta? How am I judging? If you were getting on a jet and you're going from, say, New York to L.A. and there was only one first class seat. I can't sit up there like sardines. I want to give you some advice on I don't marriage. need advice that's ignorant. Stop being fake and give us the real you. That's why preachers are public enemy number one right now, because we being fake. Preachers! Everybody wants heaven, but they live in lying hell. All right, y'all, that was, <laughs> that was part one, part two. We'll be watching it next week. Y'all going to be here next week to watch it with me next week. We're going to watch it next week together. Listen, did not our hearts burn? Bishop Gibson wife said, that's good. <laughs> if I was her, though, I'd be like, why are you taking up for this woman so much? You don't even take up for me like that. Please. Uh, all right. So next week. We're going to do the same thing if they don't strike my channel down um, for doing this. But I just feel like it's better watching it together because we get to stop. We get to talk about it. And also, um, some of you, if you have Androids, you won't be able to watch it anyway. Not unless you go, you know, through circles and hoops. So I'll just, I'll just um, put it here. You don't have to have a subscription to watch. All right. You you do not have to have a subscription to to watch. It is on the In the Black Network app, and it's Merge TV. All right, Merge TV. Okay, so we're gonna be back next week watching what happens. Seems like it's gonna be real good next week. So hopefully, like we, <clears throat> there's no sports going on that I'm probably going to want to cover, not unless LeBron them lose their next whatever games. But other than that, we'll just go straight to it, and we'll watch it, and we'll do some commentary on it. How about that? I enjoyed y'all tonight. I look forward to seeing you next week. But Bishop Jones, I apologize. I apologize for... Not understanding why it took you so long. 
but now I understand. Um, and sir, you, <laughs> you, to me, he feel like, it seems like he just feel like, Lord, what have I done? But he can't undo it now. <laughs> laughing at him it's just the way that he just moved now he he's old bishop jones is old now and so old people say and do whatever and i'm looking forward to watching him and i hope cheney cleans up his act next week that's what i hope and i hope dominique comes on the show but if not i understand and I need to get up with Maisha and see if she will come on my show so we can talk about this. <sighs> yeah, he going to ride this one on out. <laughs> I mean, he ain't got a lot of time left, but Jesus Christ. If you follow Loretta on social media, she is a lot. <laughs> I don't. I don't. But um, um this was great. I enjoyed y'all. So looking forward to seeing you next week. Same time, same channel. Put a pin in it. I'll see y'all later. Have a good night.